you need to understand how Google uses machine learning. Here's why. Hey everyone, today I have Jessica Peck with me. Jess is a marketing technology associate here at our proficient uh, offices in Framingham. She works on our internal marketing tools as well as technical SEO for websites. Say hi, Jess. Hi, everyone. <laughs> awesome. So we talk a lot about machine learning here at Proficient, how we use it for ourselves, how our vendors use it, and for SEO, and well, how Google uses it. Yeah, it's a massive topic. And even if you just talk about how Google uses it, there are tons of variations uh, for translation, image recognition, voice, and natural language processing. And then the development of TensorFlow and other libraries and developments from the Google Brain team, too. Yeah, so obviously Google loves machine learning. And it's useful them to use ma machine learning for search. So we've talked about this before on Here's Why. but. How Google uses machine learning to understand a user's query intent and how to find the best content to match that intent. Right. It's been a shift over time from exact match kind of rudimentary search system with other computational methods to give the appearance of machine understanding, like PageRank, and moving towards more machine learning, actual machine learning methods, and trying to match intents to concepts and vice versa which is a lot more complicated than just matching two strings. Yes, and Google wants to remove as much human interference from search results as possible. They want to s serve the user the fastest, most comprehensive answer possible for the exact query and intent. And machine learning can help them do that at scale. So Google uses machine learning systems to find sites that have deep content experiences on a query intent level and an entity level. This is where you can see the elements of how we understand voice and visual search creep into the traditional search context too. And Google is trying to understand queries more conversationally and building responses based on all of the elements of what an entity is, including visual signals. For sure. If you look at how to build a Google Assistant app, for example, the breakdown of how you build queries for that entity, intent, etc. mirrors some of the ways we can expect Google to do the same thing. So with such a big machine learning universe around search, what should marketers be thinking about and should be on the look for as well? Well, we don't really know all of the ways Google uses machine learning and search, and they're certainly experimenting with new methods all the time. But for natural language understanding, there are three named important algorithms that we can talk about explicitly. The first is rank brain. And they called it one of the top three most important ranking factors when it was released in 2015. Yeah, definitely. Gary Yush has described rank brain as machine learning rank the machine learning ranking component that uses historical search data to predict what a user would most likely quick, click on for a previously unseen query. If RankBrain sees a word it isn't familiar with, it can guess at what might have a similar meaning and filter search results based on that. It attempts to map new queries into entities that have the best chance of being related to or matching it. So it's great with dealing with new search queries and long tail keyword scenarios. Yes, right. It greatly helps Google hit the ground running on new trends and entities. It's also part of understanding user intent and language. RankBrain helps Google understand what stop words like and and the when they're important, like for the differences between the query office and the query the office. No, absolutely. Uh, so it's a user intent algorithm. It can tell if a query is a news-oriented uh, query better than traditional Google search algorithms. Um, and helps Google decide what parts of the ranking algos uh, get applied to different searches. It picks the best existing Google algorithms to match that intent and deliver a search result. Exactly. Now you can't really optimize for rank brain. It's more about making sure your content is in the right place at the right time about the right things. So what's the second named algorithm? Well, well, we're on algos. We've been over before, and here's why. Let's go over Bert again. And I promise to make any, not make any more jokes about Ernie this time. Excellent. So I'll hold you to that. <laughs> so Bert is a bidirectional algorithm. It greatly helps Google understand the context around individual words, both forwards and backwards, not just one by one. So yes, in their post uh, about the launch of Bert. 
Google said that BERT will help search better understand one in 10 searches in the US in English. And they've been expanding BERT's capabilities to other languages since then. Yes. For both BERT and RankBrain, it seems like around 10% of searches are, get affected. Well, for a lot shorter tail searches, Google probably doesn't have to try using machine learning. There are plenty of factors that go towards understanding pages quality on a more frequently, for more frequently searched terms. But BERT seems to be very useful for longer long tail queries. I think you could say the same about RankBrain yeah. that, um, that are less frequently searched for. Right. So the examples that Google gives of searches that BERT helps with involve relationships between words that are that used to be kind of guessed at and are now explicit. Sentences like, Brazil traveler to USA needs a visa, or can you get medicine for someone pharmacy? Um, Don Anderson, at Dorniando on Twitter, has done a lot of work on this topic, and I definitely recommend checking out her Twitter to learn some more about this kind of algorithm. Right, so these were two major developments in natural language processing and machine learning for Google. What's the third? Uh, neural matching. Oh, yes. this, this was brought up by Danny Sullivan in 2018, and I think it's criminally under-discussed under -discussed in search circles. So what is neural matching? It's super synonyms, matching words to concepts. So you know when you're trying to like describe a thing, and it's uh, big, and it's gray, and it has a trunk, and it has ears, and... It's an elephant. Yes. So we did some neural matching right there with yeah. the neural networks in our heads. Neural matching is helping Google get better at understanding people when they maybe aren't super coherent or aren't sure of the precise words that will get them what they want. And who hasn't Googled something like songs that go dun 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 and been surprised at how close the results get? So how can we optimize for neural matching then? Well, once again, it's not that easy, right? It's less about optimizing for neural matching and more about recognizing the patterns that neural matching is an element of. How are your customers actually searching for your products or pages? Are they searching for SEO or are they searching for, make my site be hiring Google, please? It comes back to ensuring you have comprehensive, comprehensible content, content that can cover the different ways that people ask questions and the detailed questions that they ask and get them to the answers um, that they're really looking for. Yeah. So, write good content? Yes. Google wants to be able to tell what is good content without having a human involved. But humans will always inevitably read your content. So ensuring it's good is important at every level. Thanks, Jess, for joining me today. And if you like our video, please subscribe to our channel by clicking below. And don't forget to turn on the notification so you won't miss any of our future episodes. Bye, everyone.